Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode four of the Firebird build. And before we start, I'd just like to say how pleased I am with the response that this series has got so far. It seems to be reaching a wider audience and bringing some people into the channel who perhaps haven't been before, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you all for tuning in. If you are one of the new viewers, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It really will help me to push this channel out to even more like-minded individuals like ourselves. And for everyone, hit the like button if you're enjoying the video. And if you've got anything to ask, just drop me a comment. I'm always happy to answer them. Anyway, on with the video, and this time we're going to move away from the neck blank for a little while and start making the two wings for the body. Right, so it's time to get a start on these wings of the guitar, um, and to do that I've got this little offcut of mahogany. As I said in the first episode, this was gifted to me by a friend, and I used it on the Great Guitar Build Off 2021 build for the back of the wings on that body. I spent a bit of time refining my templates, and I'm pretty happy that I can get both of these onto the one bit of wood okay and that's not going to cause any problems however there is an issue with this build that you don't normally come across and that is that the wings of this body are actually tapered so they're thicker at the edge that meets the body than they are at the outside edge and as we can see on the drawing the drawing actually shows 33 millimeters where it meets the body and 28 millimeters at the extreme edge. I've measured this material and it's actually 31. So we're a couple of mil down on where we would be if we were gonna be absolutely 100% accurate to the drawing. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be one mil either side of the body difference. So realistically, that's not gonna make any difference whatsoever. It's certainly not enough difference to worry me. But to make this work, all I'm simply gonna do is take the thickness I've got, which is 31 mil, and take that down to 28 at the extreme edge. So that's a difference of 1.5 mil per side. The problem comes when you start to think about order of operations, because do we cut these out first and then put those chamfers on, or do we put the chamfer onto the material and then cut the shape out? It presents us with a problem either way. If we cut them out first, and then chamfer them, it presents as issues whilst putting the control cavities and this switch cavity in. But if we chamfer the material first and then cut them out, it makes it difficult to get the square edge that we require on the profile. So there's a bit of a balancing act to do there. My decision is that I'm gonna cut them out first, route them to shape so I've got that square edge and then chamfer them down. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna mark around these with the pencil, get them to the bandsaw, roughly cut them to shape, and then we can think about refining them further. Now, can't see the lines at all on the band saw, so I'm gonna see what I can do with a white pencil instead. Okay, so there's the two halves roughly bandsawed out. A job not made easy by the fact that I need a new bandsaw blade and a new drive belt on the bandsaw. So we had a few little issues with that, but we got there in the end. So the next thing to do is to firmly attach these templates back on with some masking tape and super glue. And then we can get the router into action and start trimming them down and getting them to the final shape. Now, I'm only going to route these areas, I'm not going to route this straight bit that joins the body. I will be planing that to make sure that that's absolutely level, straight and square. All right, get these prepped up.
Okay, so that's the two halves routed. Now you may be able to see on here, there's actually some little joints in this wood. Now I always knew that it was made up from more than one piece. Personally, that's not a problem to me. The whole guitar is made up of laminations of wood, so a few more really don't bother me that much at all. So next thing I want to do is just mark up where I need to plane these down. And I'm just going to run my scalpel down the side of the template. And this is only really to give me a rough guide of how much material to take off. I will use the plane to determine whether it's straight enough. Let's see if we can get the templates off. Okay, so I'll just get these in the vise. And get the number six plane on them and get them trimmed down to size. And if anyone's wondering what I put on the sole of my plane, it's just a little block of wax. It's melted down candle wax. It just helps to lubricate the sole. Okay, so that's those two edges planed down. They're absolutely spot on for square. And if I put the two together and hold them up to the light, there's absolutely no light coming through there at all. So really, really happy with that. So next up is to get the chamfer onto them. I'm gonna start with this one because it's given me two similar reference points to work from. And we'll see how we go along with it. Now, I've been thinking about this and potentially I could have put these through the thicknesser with them just shimmed up by one and a half mil. But to do that, I would have to ensure that they go through the thickness are perfectly straight. If they went at an angle, I'd get an uneven chamfer on them. So for the sake of 10 minutes work with a hand plane, I'm just gonna mark them and do them that way. So I'll just start by setting, set my marking gauge. It's about a mil and a half. And I'm just gonna put those marks in in those areas furthest away and start working my way down to them. It's not going to take very long at all, I don't think. And there we have the two wings kind of done. The chamfering isn't that kind of dramatic, but you can tell when you lay them on a flat surface, they kind of sit down at a jaunty angle. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way that that's gone. There's a, a couple of little bits that need sorting out. I still need to do a bit of sanding where the router's chattered a little bit on it. But other than that, really, really happy. Good day's work. I did, however, say earlier on that I'm having a few problems with the bandsaw and it's not really operating as well as it could be. But it's also just occurred to me that I've actually got a much bigger problem on this build and I'll go and demonstrate. And here's my problem. This is as wide as my saw will open. That is the thickness I need to cut. That's not gonna work. There's a few things that can happen here. One, I can find a friend with a bandsaw Two, I've got a lot of hand sawing in my future. Or three, we're gonna to have to find another solution. But that's something I'm gonna to have to go away and think about. I'm gonna be back in a couple of days time with the next instalment. So until then, as always, like if you've liked, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.
Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.